Hey all, Ron here from Military Images Magazine with a new episode of Life on the Civil War Research Trail. Today, I was looking into the life and military service of the artilleryman pictured here, Samuel Jones Pickens, a private in Battery K of the 1st Ohio Light Artillery. As I began to look at the photograph and get a sense of what he was wearing and starting to research his career, I noticed that the photographer has his imprint on the back, his advertisement, and his name is James Fitzallen Ryder. That's the photographer's name. And so I began to go down the research rabbit hole to find out a little bit more about Ryder. And I'll also mention that I have come across his name before and noted that he was prominent in Cleveland, Ohio, and originally from New York as a prominent Daguerrean, one of the pioneer photographers beginning in the 1840s, so the early days of photography. And by the time he set up his own shop in Cleveland, he was doing quite well. What I didn't know about Ryder is that he wrote his memoirs in 1902, and the book is called Voigtlander and I in Pursuit of Shadow Catching, a story of 52 years companionship with a camera. Inside this book, which is an absolutely wonderful read, there is a chapter, a short chapter, that's dedicated to what he calls the War of the Rebellion, the Civil War, of course. And so I want to read you a passage because it will give you some perspective around Private Pickens, and it will tell you about Ryder, who wanted to contribute, as you'll find out shortly, he wanted to make a contribution to the war effort, and he did so in an interesting way. And what I'm about to read to you tells you what it was, but you're also going to learn why we should remember Ryder today for what he did. So here we go. Quote, when the War of the Rebellion came and a call for men was made and thousands of young men were offering themselves to the government, to their country, I was stirred with a desire to do something. While because of physical defects, I could not be accepted as a soldier, yet I could manifest my friendliness to the cause and the boys who were going in another way. I advertise that all young men going to the front, not having a photograph to leave with their mothers, should come to me and get one free of charge. So cordially and numerously was my invitation accepted that I found myself very busy for several weeks. I worked exclusively for the soldier boys, declining to receive orders or money for their work explaining to my regular customers that I felt under a patriotic obligation to serve the boys before all others. It came to pass that many of these boys did not return, and in many instances, those hastily made photographs were valued above price. The thanks I received from mothers, brothers, sisters, and fathers were many, in those days of preparation, companies of soldiers were sent in from surrounding towns to be drilled in camp, and from our camps in Cleveland were sent to other camps nearer the front. Every day or two, new regiments went marching through our streets from camp to cars headed for the conflict. It was no uncommon thing to see marching beside a young soldier in the ranks, his mother, his sister, or possibly his sweetheart, to have a few last words of farewell. A hand within a hand, a hand resting upon the arm of a dear boy, possibly going to his death. The giving at the moment of separation, a pocket Bible, a finger ring, a trinket of some sort as a mascot, with the wish that was a prayer, were trying incidents likely to bring a lump to the throat of a sympathetic beholder. By and by, some poor wounded boy in blue would be seen coming up from the train in a baggage wagon going to the hospital or, if a resident, possibly returning to his mother or his wife. 
I remember one morning a sturdy soldier named Tillotson was brought up from the depot, lying upon a stretcher in a baggage wagon, this was before ambulances, which was backed up to the entrance door of the Weddell House. And while preparations were making for his removal from the wagon to the hotel, he lay there patiently upon his back, holding an umbrella over his face to keep the sun off. This was my first sight of a wounded soldier and is distinctly remembered. As time wore on, these happenings were more frequent. Wounded men came home to be nursed and the dead sent home to be buried. This was war and its results, a realization mournfully and bitterly experienced in many homes. In these times, I was kept very busy. I never had a leisure hour. The activity of war times was upon us all and thousands upon thousands of photographs that I make to be sent to the boys at the front, in camp, and in the hospitals. Many sad and tender histories, unpublished, unknown, save to the actors, could be published and woven about in these photographs. When a lucky soldier would receive from home a letter, a parcel, or a photograph, his comrades would share the reading. It was a letter from home from a comrade's home, if not their own. A mother or a sister had written it. To every man so fortunate as to listen to loving expressions from some other fellow's home, there came a touch of sympathy, and a mental glimpse of his own home came as a pleasing memory. Many poor fellows home on sick furlough were besieged by friends for photographs. So that's James Fitzalan Ryder's passage about those early times during the war when he decided to suspend his business, or I should say suspend accepting money for his business and dedicate himself to making photographs of all the soldier boys. So what can we learn from this? Um, for one thing, the photographs that we see today, these early photographs coming out of Cleveland, and perhaps the image here uh, could be, the image here of uh, Private Pickens, could have been taken for free by photographer James Ryder as doing his patriotic duty and in turn supporting the families, giving them a memento these mementos that we cherish so dearly 160 years after the war. So there's that element. Another element is hearing from Ryder. How often do we talk about those individuals behind the lens and the deeds that they did as part of the war effort? Well, Ryder's story is a testament to that. Two other footnotes to add. You may have heard that Ryder mentioned a man, a wounded man named Tillotson. So I did look around to find out if I could find a soldier with the name Tillotson that served from Ohio, possibly had a connection to Cleveland, and was wounded. And I came up with one man, George W. Tillotson of Battery D of the 1st Ohio Light Artillery. Interestingly, in the same regiment as Private Pickens. Tillotson was wounded on June 7th, 1861, in the vicinity of Laurel Hill, Virginia, which happened to be one of the early battlegrounds, early land battles of the Civil War. And the other note here is about Pickens. What happened to Pickens? Well, as a member of Battery K, of the first Ohio, he saw very little of the war. He contracted disease and died in Parkersburg, Virginia, now West Virginia. He was 19 years old and seven months. So there's the story of Samuel Pickens and the story of the photographer who took this image of Pickens, James Fitzalan Ryder. So thanks for listening. We'll see you on the next episode of Life on the Civil War Research Trail.